Developing software of any type is going to inevitably involve pulling in an open source dependency. But given that there are millions of open source projects out there and you don't know anything about their security posture or their source code, how is it that you can tell if that project you're pulling into your code is safe? When it comes to security, there is no such thing as perfectly safe software. It's all about managing risk and making informed decisions. It would be super easy for me to sit here and say that you need to do an independent source code review of every last line that you pull into your project. But let's be honest, that's practically impossible. So instead, I'd like to share with you the five phases of software review that I personally use when evaluating open source projects. The first part of the review is what I like to call the is it popular phase. Because let's be honest here, if the project gets a lot of use, it's way more likely that it's well maintained and that others may find, report, and fix security issues in a project that would otherwise go uncorrected. Almost all languages written today have some sort of system for pulling in dependencies. For Go, it's Go modules. For JavaScript projects, it's NPM. For PHP, it's Composer. For Java, it's Maven or Gradle or whatever other Java junk you might pull out of the woodwork. The websites for these package managers are a great place to start with your investigation into the security and behavior of your dependency. Take a look at the number of other projects using this package. The number isn't always 100% accurate, but if it's a significant number, you are much better off using the dependency compared to that random package you found in the deep corners of the internet with five users and zero reported issues. Zero reported issues is not a good thing, I promise. Also, make sure the package has been used recently. 10,000 downloads a year ago, but none in the last six months is a sure sign that this package is outdated or unmaintained, and you may want to look elsewhere for alternatives. Okay, so now you can see how popular this project is. The next phase is the is it maintained phase. From the projects page, find the link to the source code. Click the link and go to the source repo. Most projects will be using GitHub, so that's what I'm going to be using for my example, but you can find many of the same details on almost any Git repo site like Bitbucket or GitLab. There's a few things to check on the project's GitHub page. First, how many contributors are listed on the project? Again, this is a good indicator of the activity on the project. Next, how many stars and watchers does it have? Do a lot of people have this project bookmarked so they can get back to it? Next, does the project have an openly available issue queue? If so, take a look and see what's in there. There will always be bugs and feature requests, but does anything stand out as fishy? Any unaddressed security issues or devs screaming about how nobody has merged their stuff in months? These are all signs to look out for. Before you leave the issue queue, take a look at the closed issues. See how long it's been since an issue was closed. See what types of issues have been resolved. You're specifically going to be looking for a healthy amount of activity on the project, which indicates it's actively maintained and people care about the security and functionality of the package. Hey, if you're getting something out of this video, take a moment to like and subscribe. The next step is the is security even considered phase. Take a look to see if this project has the security tab activated. Some will openly show known security vulnerabilities. Others will have a list of security advisories or a security policy. Anything here in this tab is probably a good sign that the maintainers care about security. You'll find that some projects will even have a note in the readme about how to report security issues. Most open source projects would prefer that they get a shot at fixing an issue before it's publicly announced for good reason. And if the project you're reviewing has this, that's also a very good sign. As a final step, you could do a review of the actual source code of the project. Now, I know sometimes these projects are huge and there's no way you could possibly review the whole thing, but it doesn't hurt to take a look at the parts you want to use, especially if the functionality you need is mission critical. Finally, and maybe most importantly, check one of the many CVE databases on the internet. My favorite is osv.dev. Just type the name of the package to see a history of the CVEs filed against the project, and most importantly, if it was fixed and how long it took. The site will list the URL of the original report so you can take a look at the details and the resolutions. The last step is the is it even necessary phase, and that's a good question. It's worth investigating. If you find something you think you need because you don't know how to do it yourself, maybe you can just take a look at the source code of that project, pick out the piece you need, and write them yourself with less complexity. For example, do you really need the whole Axios JavaScript package if you only need to do a simple post? Probably not. And finally, we have the maintenance phase. Okay, you've installed the package, now what? Well, security never ends, so make sure you are doing something to monitor all the dependencies you have installed. The easiest way to do this is to enable Dependabot alerts on your project in GitHub. It will automatically scan your lock files to get a list of all projects you use and report any known security issues in the dependencies. It'll even offer to automatically update your project and resolve security issues for you. Okay, I think I'll leave it there. If you could take a small amount of time and do these steps before importing a package, it might just save you a ton of headaches in the future. And if you're interested in open source, maybe check out this video. Until next time, happy coding.